Hello everyone, welcome to my genetics honors project. My name is Allie Proctor and for my project I'm going to be looking at gene targeting in mice, which was the project winning award for the Nobel Prize in 2007. A little bit more about this topic, um, more specifically gene targeting in mice. Um, the reason it won the Nobel Prize is for its technology that was developed by three scientists, Mario R. Capici, Sir Martin J. Evans, and Oliver Smithies. Um, they used mice to test specific genes to find out their specific functions and then use those for human application. Um, and they were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in the year of 2007. A little bit more about the methods and technologies that they used to get here. So one of the main pieces here is embryonic stem cells were used um, and they in mice blastocytes, so these early embryonic um, stages of development proteins were modified and genes were targeted here. Um, so gene targeting takes a lot of different forms, um, but in this research experiment, the most prevalent one was knockout mice. And what this knockout means is that specific genes are inactivated through these technologies um, in order to determine their specific functions. So when we narrow in on one gene, we're able to find out its specific function and role in these mice and how that can be used to help humans. Um, so the overall experiment combined the research of all three of these scientists, um, which means it com involved these ideas with embryonic stem cells, but also homologous recombination of genes um, in mammalian cells, these mice, um, which means that genetic information was brought from these embryonic stem cells into early mouse embryos, we said those blastocytes, through in vitro techniques and homologous recombination, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more now. So the first part of this discovery process, as I said, involved homologous recombination, and this work was done by Capici and Smithies. So on the left here, I have a diagram that de defines the first few steps of this gene targeting techniques. So in a nutshell, what they did was Capici introduced new DNA um, into in these chromosomes into mammalian cell subjects. So you can see that he took these brand new pieces of DNA and enter them into the mouse um, gene line. And by choosing specific DNA, um, he was able to create these target vectors, which then go on to target specific genes within the genome um, in order to repair inoperative genes specifically from those targeted areas. So that's one, something that's really important about gene targeting is it looks at one specific area and works one piece at a time. So then while attempting, while doing all this, Smithies was attempting to fix one particular mutation in a disease, but what he discovered along the way is that you were able to look more specifically at these target vectors and see exactly where they were going to impact the germ cell line um, and this was able to be used by Capici's homologous recombination techniques. So the two of their work together was really important to discover how specific targeted vectors um, translate to targeted genes and how then you're able to modify the genetics of a specific area and location or tissue. The second part of this discovery process and goes back to the embryonic stem cells. So once we have the targeted cells that we're looking at, they then were inserted into these blastocyte mice, as we talked about a little bit before, this would be in a surrogate mouse mother, um, who would go on to produce offspring in a new population of mice. Um, they were, those mice of that offspring were then mated um, with normal mice, and then their offspring were tested to see if they had those genes that were specifically targeted for it, and they did, meaning this was a success. So on, although they were unable to determine the, or find the abnormal material in the first sound, they were discovered again at the end, which means that their techniques were successful and that by implanting these um, genes in, from the new DNA from the targeted vectors into these early blastocytes, they would be carried down the gene line. Some applications of discovery that we're going to get into is how important this work on mice is for humans. So. Based on the Human Genome Project, looking at mammalian DNA, humans and mice share over 90% of their DNA with one another, which means that almost everything up to 90% of what we discover about mice genes can be 
looked at from a human perspective and can be used to advance human pharmaceuticals. And today, more than 10,000 genes have been targeted in mice for the purpose of human advancements, which is really great that we're able to use these mice and practice these techniques so that we can further develop um, human medication. So one specific example of this is hypertension, um, which is a widely re researched genetic disorder and it affects the renin-angiotensin system. I have a picture of a man getting his blood pressure checked here on the left because that is something that hypertension has a lot to do with. Um, and the way that gene targeting in mice has to do with this is that when we do the gene targeting in mice, we're specif specifically check checking in on the renin-angiotensin system and researchers are looking for ways that they can understand how the DNA and the genetic material is different in those who are subject to this disease and how by gene targeting we might be able to prevent it for those in the future or just develop further medications and prevent prevention methods um, for those subject to this disease. And another example is type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance which is a very widespread health threat here and in other countries and um, I have a picture here, a diagram showing that someone getting his weight checked with his doctor and discussing healthy methods of living because this is something that those with insulin resistance must keep good track of. And the way that the gene targeting in mice impacts this and works with this is that researchers have been looking at the genes that are specifically involved in insulin resistance in mice and then translating what they find into that for humans to figure out how we can develop genes or manipulate genes in a way that will allow them to not resist insulin anymore. And so these are just two examples of how that this targeting in mice has had broad scientific um, impacts and that how their research can be even further continued into the future as there is so much to learn. Just a bit about each of the three researchers. Mario R. Capici, he mainly got education at Antonach College, MIT, Harvard Medical School, but did his research for this project at Utah and had many other significant accomplishments, most notably work with the RNA bacteriophage R17. Sir Martin J. Evans received education at Christ College, University of Cambridge, and University of College London, but did his research at Cardiff University. And he is actually a founder fellow of the Academy of Medical Sciences, as well as a fellow of the Royal Society. Oliver Smithies received education at Oxford, Balliol, and University of Wisconsin while doing his research at UNC Chapel Hill. And one of his most noted accomplishments is his invention of starch gel electrophoresis. And these are my references. I hope you enjoyed and learned something about gene targeting in mice. Thank you.